Hi, I'm Neil, and I make videos about sculpting, molding, and casting. If that sounds like something up your alley, then please hit that subscribe button to get all the latest content. If you are a fan of capybaras, then you are going to be a fan of today's video. This video is going to detail the sculpting process of my capybara figure, and if you make it through to the end, then you'll get a little sneak peek at the finished figures. So let's go ahead and jump in. Beginning here with an image that I downloaded from the internet and then printed out. And you can see I did a tracing paper overlay where I traced out the main shapes of my little capybara. I'm highlighting them here with the pencil. If you've seen some of my other videos, you've seen that I start out with an armature oftentimes. In a case like this where the figure is going to be pretty blocky, not a lot of dynamic action going on, it's going to be a little more shape oriented, so I don't really need an armature for this. So I like to do a shape layout where I can block out the basic shapes of the figure with clay rather than worrying about the structure of the pose with an armature. So you can see I broke down the capybara into a few basic shapes and I'm just recreating them with the clay. Just laying them against the shape layout sheet that I created and making sure I get them the right size and proportion. It's a great way to start out a figure. Sometimes I have a hard time breaking down shapes just by looking at a picture, so doing these shape layouts really helps me get things accurate. So I follow that shape layout during the entire block out of the figure. I'm just smoothing out here as I go along, as you can see. I'm getting in those front limbs. Since this pose is gonna be relatively blocky. I really want to make sure that all of the, the proportions and shapes are accurate, so I'm really taking my time here to make sure all of that looks correct before moving into the texture. You can see I put in the facial features to help add some landmarks, give me a little reference to make sure all the shapes are looking accurate. Keeping everything pretty simple right now. making sure I look at this from different angles to make sure all the shapes are the correct size. Don't want to go too far on one angle without turning it to view from other angles. Basically, just keep turning your sculpture as you work. I am using a mixture of monster clay and CX-5. Basically is the consistency of monster clay hard. I warm up the clay a little bit in the microwave and I let it cool off so it's a little bit firmer but still workable. And you can see I'm just laying the clay in in strips and then smoothing it in to the rest of the figure. Using my tools where needed, in areas like around the ears where it's a little harder for my fingers to get, helps me smooth in the clay. Also making sure to smooth in the seams and gaps between the legs when I move on to the molding process, I don't want mold rubber to get stuck in between those crevices, so I make sure they're all sealed up and there's no gaps present. I'm now moving into roughing in the fur texture with a larger tool at first, and then I'll move into finer detail. This is kind of mapping out the direction of the flow of the fur. I like to do that before adding in the fine hair detail, I'm really mapping in that neck fur, which is going to be longer, so there will be more detail in that fur. I'm 
You can see I switched to my fine line tool for the hairs on the face, which are much finer and shorter. And now along the front of the neck and chest area, I'm adding in a few strips of clay to represent some longer clumps of fur. I lay the strips in and then blend them into the rest of the fur and add some texture over top. Now accentuating that longer hair along the jawline and under the chin. And going back and adding that finer fur detail. And once again adding in some strips of clay to simulate longer fur, this time along the back of the neck. Kind of giving a look of a rough of the neck. Tooling in that hair detail over top. Sculpting fur is really a lot of reworking and just continuously adding detail until it looks accurate. Always making sure to follow the flow of the form. Taking a break to add in the toes, I've already sculpted the toes on the right front leg and now I am going to repeat that process for the left leg. Just rolling out thin tapered shapes for each toe and then smoothing them in. If you find your clay is ever getting too squishy on you and you're having a hard time sculpting with it, you can just pop it into the fridge or freezer for a few minutes and let it firm up. It's especially helpful on hot days. Doing the same with the back feet here. A little easier since they're kind of tucked under. and then getting in those little side fingers, almost like dew claws. And now continuing on with the rest of the fur. This wire loop tool that I'm using is my favorite tool for sculpting fur. As you can see, it creates really nice soft lines, really perfect for creating that believable fur texture. The same process is repeated throughout the figure, going back in and creating those longer clumps of fur to help break up the outline of the figure as well as the monotony of the texture.
getting pretty close to the end here. And here is the finished figure. So just real quickly gonna show how I build the mold box. With this guy I need a little platform riser, a little foot, to help raise him off the baseboard. That's going to help give me some wiggle room when I pour the resin. Just hot glue him to that little platform and then I glue that to the main baseboard after I seal him completely to the little foot there. That's so the silicone does not get caught under there. Just like I sealed the gaps between the legs earlier, this seals off those gaps so silicone can't get stuck. So once I have him glued to the baseboard, I can then map out the seam line, which is where I will be cutting the mold open. And to finish off the mold, I just have a tube of coated cardstock that I seal to the baseboard with hot glue. And then I just finish everything off with a little piece of masking tape along the top so that the mold does not deform. I'm not going to be showing the silicone pouring, but I have poured the mold. It has cured for 24 hours, and now it's time to cut it open with my X-Acto knife. I just follow the seam line that I marked on the model, cutting straight when I am near the seam line and using a zigzag pattern away from the seam line in order to key the mold. If you want to learn more about mold making, I have much more in-depth process videos on my channel, so be sure to check out my other videos. And here is a glimpse at the final figures after they have been cast and painted. They made great little Zen Garden ornaments. I do plan on having these for sale in my shop later in the year. For now, thank you for watching the video. I do hope you got something out of it. If you did, I sure would appreciate a thumbs up, a comment, a share, anything you can do to help the channel is much appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.